Today, we have a topic that never ever gets old. And it's very important. If you haven't thought about this, you either are brand new to the gym or you're losing out. Today, the topic is shoes. What shoes to wear at the gym? And a big shout out to uh, Timmy Porter because he uh, asked the other day. And as soon as he asked me about what shoes to get, I was like, well, that is a question for a podcast and not a short answer at the gym. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, I've got with me Nick Bedouin. Good morning. How are you going? Returning for his third time in a very short amount of time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, he's always good to have on board to uh, track numbers and uh, give us all the data. Talk shoes. That's all right. Yeah. And we also have Cal. Good Calvin morning. Ford. Morning. Good to be here. You might remember him from a video on what it's like to train in our class. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he, I actually uh, should say, because uh, I gave Nick the intro about the numbers and the data, but Cal has today done that work and he's yeah. got a spreadsheet. I do. That we got to uh, review last night and um, we have quite a few different shoes to go through. We do, long list. Yes. But before we get started, Cal... What was your takeaway from uh, the last podcast that me and Nick did with the Whoop and the Aura Band? Ooh, <clears throat> that's a big question. Because you yourself are a Whoop user. I am a Whoop user, yes. Yeah. Um, and by the way, show that to the camera. That is the Whoop with the charging pod on. Would you call it a pod? Charging pod? Battery? Charging battery? Yeah. yeah. It looks a little bit big and clunky, but it takes, how long does it take to charge? An less hour or so? Less than an hour, yeah. yeah. I did mine this morning. Yeah. yeah. So you put it on for an hour and then it just actually slides off like that. Oh, easy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What did you, uh, actually, uh, let me change the question. What did me and Nick miss out on in that podcast? What did we skip? Was there anything that we talk, didn't talk about that you feel was a benefit oh. of the whoop or something that, you know, is good to think about before you buy it? God, I wish I had had time to think about that question. I don't know. I think it was pretty comprehensive. <laughs> I mean, they both have pros and cons. Um, I think my takeaway is definitely for CrossFit, I think the Whoop is a better device. It's more flexible. It's easier to wear. You can kind of twist it around, move it up and down, mm. all that sort of stuff. So, Do like you wear whoop. it 24-7? Pretty much. I take it off to shower and I do clean it. Um, Why do it, you take it off to shower? It is water resistant, right? Well, it does get wet. I just find it's um, nicer to wear when it's... Dry. Ah, uh, the band. The, the band gets wet. Strap. Yeah, it's kind of like a flexible mm. material. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's uh, skip on to our main topic today, which is the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were the first shoes you wore to a CrossFit class, Nick? Do you rem remember? Oh, totally. I remember going out and even buying them before. <laughs> Wait, did you buy CrossFit class shoes before your first CrossFit yeah, class? Yeah, 100%. I was like, okay. I can't come into this. Oh, wow. You it was are like, in the minority there. <laughs> well, it's like, sure. I, uh, I'll never forget my, like, I, uh, my intro of, uh, with uh, Bloody Sean. And uh, I was in there and like everyone's working out. I'm like, oh, I can't go into this unprepared. You know, like I've got a bit of a sporting background and I'd like to have <laughs> everything sorted and organized before. So I remember like yep, signing up and then like that night going out to uh, the shops and buying like a pair, which were the Reebok Speed TRs back then. I think that's what they were called. They're still around. Yeah, still around. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But just the models changed. Okay. Yeah, because they were cheap. And I was like, eh, I was a bit on the fence. I didn't want to spend like 200 yeah. bucks on a pair of shoes. So I spent like 90 bucks, got a pair of Reeboks. I was like, all right, I won't look like a total noob. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cal, how about you? I did look like a total noob. So I was big into running before I started CrossFit. So I wore my best pair of running shoes, which I think were like a top of the range Nike Vimeros. And I thought they were like pretty cool. And I worked out pretty quickly that running, sh running shoes have pretty much no cred in a CrossFit gym. So yeah, 
Yeah, we got to be careful with that. I think there's still a few people with running shoes in the gym. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're not get, having a go at you guys, but we might have some good advice for you by the end of this podcast <laughs> on what your second pair of shoes should be if you're only sure. wearing runners. Yeah. Um, now, this question will only work for you then, Cal. Yep. How soon after starting CrossFit um, did you buy real, you know, proper CrossFit shoes? Yep. And And how did you get to that decision? Yeah, I feel like it was probably within two months um, and how I arrived with it was you just kind of look around, you see a lot of other people wearing those types of shoes, you talk to people, um, ask them about the shoes, what's good about them, why do you wear them, all that sort of stuff um, and so yeah, I kind of also wanted to fit in a little bit as well and did a lot of research and the main shoe available back then, like the real CrossFit shoe was the Reebok Nano, so it was the Nano 4. So that was it. I bought a pair of uh, black Reebok Nano 4s. And I remember the first day walking into the gym wearing those shoes and I was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a CrossFitter. And um, I'm pretty sure I wore those shoes everywhere. So I wore them to the supermarket, out to the, out to the shops. If I was out walking with the kids, I would wear them. I was, I was just loving them and, and frothing over them. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted everyone to know I'm, I do CrossFit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so back when I started, I have done it a little bit longer than you guys. There were actually no CrossFit shoes. Uh, you were considered elite if you wore the blue Innovate F Lite 235, I think, which was really thin, sold um trail runners <clears throat> was this back in 1970 yeah <laughs> roughly <laughs> back then uh but just to give give you uh the listener or you guys an idea of what people were wearing then because um back then back then as well people had big sole runners that was kind of what everyone wore and then as you trained more and more in the gym you did box jumps deadlifts you realize hey i need a flatter sole shoe for just training inside the gym. I don't need these runners. And people were wearing uh, Dunlop volleys. They would go and buy those. Yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of people would get those. And then uh, cons, yeah. converses, yeah. which are really flat soled shoes. But not, I tried both of them and they don't fit my foot at all. This is something we're probably going to get more into later on, but they're really narrow. So they were just my feet were cramping when I trained in those. Yep. I wore cons for a little while, but I think actually I did an open workout in them, but they were terrible for me. Mm. Um, and that's why I, I love the look of them. They look sick, but for me, they're not the right shoe. Um, so yeah, that's back. That's how we started. And uh, my first proper shoe were the, the blue Novates. I was so proud when I had those. <laughs> but I would say too, that at that time, about like 10 years ago, was like the transition to like more... Uh, zero drop minimalist. Do you mean in general? In general. Yeah. Because my hiking background went from boots, boots, boots to innovate, zero drop, uh, very light, those particular mm. model shoes. And then that's where innovate was like light years ahead of everyone. Yeah. And then there's like the, uh, the New Balance Minimuses. Um, I would guess a lot of people probably started wearing those I training those, too. Yeah. yeah, they were really uh, good. Yeah, and I think that's kind of that crossover where everything started to split from the big mm. maximal cushion. Yeah, athletic shoes, if you want to call it that. <clears throat> yeah, the the Innovate Athletes were one the lightest pair of shoes I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. and they were super flexible, so the sole could just you could just bend it however you wanted, yeah. and what you're saying, Nick, with a zero drop is uh, yeah. what they talk about there is the difference between the ball of the foot and the heel of the foot and how many millimeters that's dropping. And now there's shoes that have literally zero drops. It's a flat sole shoe, mm -hmm. which is if you look at your foot, you walk around barefoot, yeah. your zero there should be zero drop. Yeah. And then you have, I think the Asics Kianos or Kianos or however you say it, I think they're 14 mil. Yeah. More than a centimeter drop. Oh, wow. It's massive. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's changed a lot. Um, before we crack on with the list and giving the answer to what everyone wants as in to <laughs> what shoes should I get for CrossFit, historical reference, the very first CrossFit shoe that was designed specifically for CrossFit was the Reebok Nano 1 in 2011. 
I think. I didn't even 11? know. Okay. I think it was 11, not 12. Yeah. Or maybe it was 12, yeah. 2012. So it's a while ago. And that was at the time close to a zero drop shoe. I think it was three mil mm. and had a wide base. Actually, it was a really good shoe. One of my favorite nanos still so far. Mm. Did you own a pair? I did, yeah. yeah. I had the ones. Yeah. I had every single nano pair on, up until the five, and then I stopped wearing Reeboks. Yeah. Um, I, full disclosure, I, I worked for Reebok for a little bit as well, so I got got to try a bunch of the shoes. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. Now, Cal, if yeah. someone at the gym asks you, what shoes should I get for CrossFit? Before we go through the list and the specifics, what's kind of your first go-to answer? It depends. And I don't think there's a perfect CrossFit shoe. And the reason being is that we do so many different things here in the gym. So we do a lot of running. We do a lot of lifting. You do a lot of gymnastics works like rope climbing and skipping and jumping and box jumps. Uh, Number one, I don't think there's a perfect shoe for everything that we do in here and I don't think there's a perfect shoe for everyone and everyone has their own individual preferences. Um, There is probably one shoe that I would recommend as a good all-rounder sort of shoe, which is kind of the last shoe that I've arrived at after going through, I was counting them up this morning, I think I've been through like seven, seven pairs of CrossFit (laughs) shoes. (laughs) Um, more than one a year? Yeah, which is <laughs> more than one a year. Uh, the, the Nike Metcon Free X, okay? And the reason I recommend that is it is really good for running. So it has a little bit more cushioning uh, in the sole. It's very light while still having a lot of stability as well for lifting and all of those types of things. So I, for me, I find that's the best all-round shoe because I do like a little bit more cushioning mm. for running and jumping and skipping and all of those types of things just for my kind of knees and, yeah. and joints. By the way, if you're listening to this podcast, we recommend to jump on the YouTube version because I will put up photos of the shoes as we reference to them so you can see what the yeah. shoes look like. <laughs> Nick, how about you? How do you answer that question? Well, it's kind of, uh, it'd be very similar to what Cal said, uh, but I've kind of, our programming has changed here. So before I thought there was a, a bit more variety and I would say I had like in my gym bag, I had a three shoe, <laughs> a three shoe quiver. <laughs> I had like, I had, uh, lifters, weightlifting shoes, I had my CrossFit shoes. And then I had a pair of running specific shoes. We uh, the programming was, we had a lot more running. Mm. Like way, 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 way more running. Mm. And I just couldn't find that right balance yep. between a CrossFit shoe that could do 2K runs mm. that wasn't just unbearable. So uh, this programming that we're doing now recently, I find that we're doing a lot less running. So I've had to scale the the shoe back. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for me right now, I've been using the Nano 9s and I think they're the best ones I've ever ever used just as an all rounder easy they're they're soft they're durable uh you can go you know five or four or 600 meter runs and yep. that's that's fine mm. yeah. i feel like they're a good looking shoe as well um the nano nines yeah because i went through like a few different design variations i kind of feel like they fell off the wagon a little bit in the design yeah stakes yeah they and um, 100%. yeah, I think with that Nano Nine, I kind of got it back together. It looks like more of a kind of classic sneaker style, yeah. I would say. And that, yeah. so my little, I went from uh, Nike Flyknit Twos, which were like bricks at that stage. So I'd kind of come around <laughs> back to Nike, and they're bricks. They're good lifting shoes, but they were terrible running shoes. Kind of like heavier sole, right? Yeah, like just they're heavy mm. shoe too. Yeah. And then I was using. The shoes Cal was talking about, the free Metcon X. Yep. Metcon yeah. free X. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Metcon free X. And that was like a game changer because they're so light because they have yeah. the free sole. It wasn't the Metcon sole. That mm. was the big yeah. difference. Yep. But they felt like they were so much lighter, better to run out. I thought, oh, this is a bit of a game changer for oh, the for all-rounder. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, because I have to have all the new shoes... The Nano Nines just <laughs> felt like, wow, this is the the best of both worlds. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. The way I generally would answer it, number one is go try it. 
different shoes because mm. different yep. people have different feet and they'll fit different style of shoes. So the most important part is that it fits your foot. Mm. Uh, and all generally, I recommend to go more the wider shoes because this is another thing as well. If you, our, our feet are really getting cramped up by shoes. So having something where you're flatter yep. and wider is going to be better, especially for the gym. I think generally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something that would fit your foot and has a wider toe base will make you feel more stable. One easy test in the gym is when you're squatting and if you're squatting on these runners, you're you're standing on all this rubber and you're kind of wobbling around. Whereas if you have a flatter shoe, you're going to be more grounded and solid. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the way we're going to attack this question though, is to go through a list of the main shoes that are available to purchase for CrossFit classes in mind. Yep. And uh, we're going to do, we have a, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. About eight or nine different brands. So, which is amazing thinking back on when I started, we had no brands that made a CrossFit specific shoe. Now there's even more that's on the list that we've added up. Uh, the way we did it was we obviously wanted to talk about the Reebok and the Nike shoes. They're the market leaders. And then each of us picked another couple of brands to add to the list. So Reebok Nanos and Reebok Speed TRs are the two main ones from um, Reebok. The Nano 9s are currently at $190. And I think you can get some specials at Rebel. Yeah, it was it? I think just a couple of weeks ago, they were like half price. But I don't think I've that special lot, is still on. I've seen a lot of sales right now yeah. at $135 bucks yeah. Yeah. for older colorways. which Yeah. Because they're going to release the 10 this year, I guess. Yeah. And I would definitely recommend to people to wait for sales. There's yeah. always sales happening with the shoes. If it's Rebel or Wildlife or different mm. retailers. So just kind of wait as long as possible. You can usually get 30, 40% off. Yeah. Mm. Spending 200 bucks on a pair of shoes is kind of crazy. Unless you want to. <laughs> like Nick. Unless you we, have we've, to. We've done it a few times. <laughs> Unless you have to. <laughs> yeah. I think the Speed R TR is slightly on its way out. I didn't see too many of them online. And you could definitely get a special uh, through those. Yeah. But, um, Let's talk mainly about the Nano 9. Who's you're training in it now? Yeah, got them now. Pros and cons, Nick. Ooh, uh, I'd say the pros, uh, what, what I really like about them is uh, wide, flat sole, outsole. Mm. Uh, so you feel very grounded. Uh, the rubber's good, it's very sticky. You feel very connected to the floor. Uh, but what they've really done a good job was with with the midsole is in the front at least is very soft mm. so you can uh front foot strike running and you don't feel like you're just slamming Flocking down along. in clown shoes because they do have a very wide outsole profile if you look mm. at them how does, how does that cushioning compare to say a running shoe no it doesn't doesn't. It just it, it's still it just means it's more flexible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, the midsole is a little bit more flexible. But, so the Nano Nines have this uh, outsole, uh, this cap. I don't know what you want to call it on the outside to really lock your heel in. Yep. And I like that. That's probably the best thing. And then the the flex weave. So they've been using the flex weave since the Nano Sevens now. And that's the upper of the shoe. Yeah. And this is a stretchy. Flex weave, which is the first model that they've had the stretchy flex weave, and I really like that. Like yep. you can feel it; you can move your foot around, and the the upper is can stretch and move around. Mm. Plus, for me personally, uh, narrow in the midfoot and a nice wide forefoot. So oh, I've been wearing uh, wide toe box shoes for years and years now. So I prefer to have the your forefoot locked in and a wide, not loose, but enough room in the forefoot that my toes, toes don't can get, spread out. Yeah, my toes <clears> are <throat> cramped up. Yeah. Would you classify it as a light shoe or as a mid mid light shoe? I would like say average. If you can, uh, I think these were marginally heavier, heavier than the last. Than the eights? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. And again, I can't remember. I haven't weighed them, but I remember reading the reviews and they're marginally heavier. Like yep. 0.2 of whatever. Of okay. Ounce. Yeah. I would also say there's a lot of people wearing the nines at the moment in the gym. Yeah. Uh, Emanuela, Larry. Yeah, Larry. 
Denek. Zen? Yeah. Uh, Midlum. Midlum's got them. Yeah, he's had them for a while. There's uh, there's quite a few that that yeah. I think like those shoes. If, for me personally, I've been on a Nike for the last three years. And this is the first pair of Reeboks that I've had since the five. So they need, Nano yeah. 9 converted you. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a good yeah. sell right yeah. there. What, yeah. what tipped you over? It's back to the nine. Yeah. Uh, as many reviews as possible. So this was the best <laughs> shoe. That is a YouTube channel <laughs> yeah. that reviews CrossFit gear, if you're yeah. curious. Yeah. <laughs> he said that was the, it's the, and for him to say it's the best CrossFit shoe that he has ever worn. And it's still, even the, his 2019 recap, he gave it the best all rounder. Wow. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, I, if he says yes, yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. It, it does look like a really good shoe. I haven't worn it, but I, it, from all I can see and hear is that it's the best nano they've done so far. Yeah. yeah. They've got to really step it up for the 10 if they're going to make it. Well, this it is better. what they do. They bugger it up and then they'll go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't really change anything. Mm. Yeah. Uh, quick note on the Speed TR as well. Uh, has any of you had that shoe? I have not. No. Yeah, I had years ago, mm. but I haven't had the new version. Sean has a pair now, and mm. they've got the same flex weave. Yeah, yeah. Which I've was got the one change. without the flex uh, yeah, weave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I almost never wear them. And yeah. to be honest, the main reason I don't wear mine is because the shoelace <laughs> keeps coming undone. <laughs> so annoying. It's the worst shoelace. It's yeah. a weird uh, dilemma with a shoe, really. I could, and I, yes, I know I can just change the shoelace or double knot. Oh, no, the double knot doesn't work. It's that bad. Oh, really? It, gets, it comes undone. Oh, wow. Mm, so frustrating. I talked to Sam Polno as well, and he has a similar issue with his current Nikes. Yeah. And it's just the shoelace just comes undone. Yeah. Which is, but they're actually quite frustrating because also they're really wide for me, so I've got to tighten them up uh, a lot. And yeah. then two minutes into workout, it's, they're all, all over the shop. I had mine. My issue with those was the heel slip. I just couldn't. Yes, I heard that a lot couldn't too. Couldn't lock it out and. I'd literally be doing sled pushes and they would yeah. come off. But they're quite <laughs> well, light. They're yeah. really light shoes. I think that's the upside with them. Yeah. Plus yeah. they're inexpensive. To me, yeah. that's like a, for me, why I bought them is because they're, they were cheaper. Because I want another pair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that why you bought them? <laughs> no, yeah. it's just like, it's a less commitment <laughs> to yeah. a full on $200 training shoe. Yeah. And the Speed TRs, they are not CrossFit branded. So yeah. I think they're just pitched as more of a general mm. fitness sort of shoe. Versus the Nano actually have specific CrossFit branding on them. Yeah. And I th this is a point as well, if you're new to CrossFit shoes, is a lot of the ones that are branded specific for CrossFit means that you can rope climb in them mm. and you can come down the rope without completely chewing up your shoe. Because if you were wearing like a Nike free shoe, that sole would be gone in two rope climbs. Yeah. Whereas with proper CrossFit shoes, yep. uh, you can slide down the rope and they'll be fine. Uh, saying that we don't really do that much rope climb here at the gym and mm. not a lot of well I, like we do a lot of legless if anything so well la last year i actually did that so when we when i was wearing my running my running specific shoes in a workout we had running and rope climbing mm. and then i ripped the outsole clean off, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh wow yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is an expensive rope climb yeah um my last note on the reebok nanos is that you can go to Rebel Sport and try them on. I think that's a big plus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's a Rebel Sport at Warwood Square or at Warringah Mall. You can go in and get the exact right fit for you or the right size. And if you want, you can jump online and try and find a special. Or um, I think that yeah, some of them have been cheaper at Rebel as well. So I definitely mm. recommend that to go and try on the size. Mm. Yeah. I think the color selection at Rebel is limited versus buying mm. them <coughs> through Reba. I think yeah. there's yeah. about 16 different colors now. Yeah, I th the best two websites, I think, for the Reebok Nanos are Reebok itself and yeah. the Wildlife. The Wildlife has a massive selection yep. now as well. Yep. They do uh, work to get actually specifically together with Reebok, so they get access to a lot of the colorways. Okay, that's number one on our, on our list. Number two, Nike Metcons, and they're up to number five. So they came on board a little bit later <clears throat> uh, and decided to jump in in the battle with the, the CrossFit shoes, and they have done amazingly well. Yep. To kick things off, I would say they're the coolest looking shoe. I think that's mm. one of the things they did really well. Mm. I thought. <laughs> yeah. You disagree, Cal? Same. Uh, the fives are a bit polarizing. Yeah. 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 I think when they first came out, so like the very first generation Metcon, mm. that was a cool looking shoe. 
And it was so different to the Nano, which really had a unique look. And yeah. the Metcon was like, wow, this is really different, kind of different shapes and lines and, mm. and colors and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and I did jump ship. So from the Nano 4s, I bought a black pair of Metcons. It was the Nike Metcon 2s. Yes. Yeah. The, so they were the same. First yeah. ones I had as well. Yeah. Um, same. Can I join that club? Yep. <laughs> we all, so welcome, all welcome three of club. us got converted in the beginning. Well, earlier yeah. when Nike came on board, right? Yeah. 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 That says and a little bit. For me, it was purely about the design. Yeah. yeah. They just looked better and they were a cool, cooler looking shoe. When I got the shoe, when I was training in the Mekon 2, yep. I really liked that shoe to train yeah. in. I thought that was a good shoe Yep. Uh, for me. Yeah. So at the moment, Nike has three main models for, um, for CrossFit. Metcon is kind of their headliner, uh, the very CrossFit specific one. Then they have the Metcon 3X. And again, if you're watching the YouTube, you can see a photo of it here. And it's a lighter shoe. They use a different outsole. That's the main difference. Uh, so they use the free outsole, which is come across from the running shoes. Yeah, so. and that is a lighter and more flexible. Yeah. yeah. And they also have a sock liner, which kind of holds your foot, foot in, in yeah. versus yeah. like the traditional tongue. Yeah. Well, and that's quite comfortable. I like the sock oh, liner. Oh, so comfortable. Yeah. It's yeah, amazing so when you try it the first time. Just hugs your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last one, which I th uh, I'll, I'll mention, which I d didn't think did very well, is the Flyknit 3. And I was very close to buying the Flyknit 3. Mm. Because I liked the look of it. I thought it looked sick. And then I went to the Nike shop at Warringham Mall and tried it on. And it was so clunky. Yeah. I didn't like the feel of it. Have you guys had the Flyknit 3? I feel like I, you've I, had I a fair. I had the Flyknit 2s. And they yeah. were, uh, yeah, they were very clunky. Yeah. I remember even someone else had them. Uh, Maddie Cav. Well, oh, Maddie yeah. Cav had a pair of the Flyknit And 2s. Emily had them as well. And she yeah. returned them pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm glad I didn't end up buying mm. them. Uh, but the Metcon 5, let's maybe focus on that. Yep. Heavily featured in the gym as well. Yep. A lot of people have the Metcon 5. Um, I'm going to say that the, the Metcon 5 and the Nano, I would say they've got just the the easeability to go purchase now. Yes. Online or in the shops. You go try them on. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's the main reason why they're the two biggest, easily. Right? Like. Yeah. 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 Well, you, also they're the biggest brands out of yeah. Of the ones we're looking at here, yeah, yeah, um, the, yeah. Out of CrossFit shoes, most people are wearing either Nanos or Metcons, and then maybe a few people going in for the Nobles. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the which is going to be, let's say, that's our next one that we'll look at. Yeah, mm. uh, but have you tried? Have you tried Kim the Metcon fives on? I have not tried the fives. Yeah, they look heavy to me. No, definitely they're not. not. They're light. Have you tried them on? I've not tried them. Yeah, I tried them. On. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so they're very, they're really light in hand, and they're very to me. On the foot, again, a little bit narrower through the the forefoot, uh, which is okay. But in the no, sorry, in the uh, the midfoot, but tight in the forefoot, which is not. Uh, so they're more really triangled like. at the front. Yeah, yeah. Which but is uh, like. very felt really soft mm. <clears throat> in the hand, okay. which uh, is great if for running. But it didn't sell me on it. And then the looks, I just mm. don't like them. Yeah. I think so. a big feature with the Metcon 5 is they do come in with the additional heel insert mm. to give you more lift so it can almost serve as a hybrid lifting shoe for yeah. squatting and, and those types of things. And I, I do think that's quite a, quite a good little addition or novelty for mm. the shoe. If you wonder what that shoe looks like and someone at the gym that wears them and you want to have a chat with them, I'd say LT has a custom-made pair, yeah. the red ones. They stand out quite well on the on the gym floor here, and I do like yeah. that feature though. That's mm. why my Metcon twos up were like a design your own one. I oh, the like, custom design. Yeah, and I, I mean, you can't have the same shoe everyone else has. Yeah. <laughs> I custom designed one pair of shoes, yeah. and I'm, I'm never doing it again. I'm not a good designer. I am. I am guilty of designing my own shoes. <laughs> Did it turn out well? I love them. Yeah, yeah I oh, still okay. wear them. Um, yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, which ones are they? The Mekon, the black and gold. It's oh, like the yeah. gold swoosh yeah. and yeah. speckly back fit. Yeah. You went pretty, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty. And gum sole. Yeah, minimal in the design, so yeah. it's not like too crazy. Yeah. Are you going to get a Cal's Gym shoe soon? <laughs> you never know. Get your logo Stand on. By. <laughs> okay, so uh, a new player on the market, 
quite a um, exciting brand is Noble, and you might have noticed that they sponsor people like Tia. Yep. Um, so she obviously competes in them. Catherine uh, David's Katrin, daughter. Yeah. Um, uh, Brooke Wells. Yeah. All big female names. Sam Dancer. Yep. Yep. He's a noble. <laughs> he doesn't really compete. There's not really any. Yeah, we don't really big see him that much. Male athletes, I can think of. Yeah, I agree. That are wearing the nobles. So they mainly have one model, which is the trainers, and then they have different variations of them. They mm. also have some running shoes, but yep. the trainers are the ones that are sold for CrossFitters. Nick. You have had the trainers. Yeah. I haven't seen you worn them in ages. Yeah, they're actually in the bin. So I, <laughs> I <laughs> No, they just I wore I wore oh. them. I wore them and wore them and wore them. Oh, and then okay. they were I wore them out. Yeah. Because I wear them at work. I usually will then wear them at work after mm. they're done their training life. But <laughs> Noble, they're uh, uh the sizing was really bad. And if you go online, uh can't physically try them on beforehand. So, uh, if you, you got to order it from the States, you got to order it from the States. And one of the main things online was the sizing. Everyone was saying they run a half size small. <sighs> and some people said, no, true to size, half size small. So I ordered my true to size, size nine, mm. and uh, they were half size small. Oh, God. So you spend 200 bucks on a pair of shoes, and they felt good with no, uh, no liner in them. Yeah. But with the liner in them, they just felt a little bit tight. So right off the get go, I was like, Ugh. "What do you mean liner?" When you say so liner? the the footbed liner, the so inner sole. Oh, yeah. inner oh, sole, inner sole. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so so you wore them without the inner sole? No, I broke them in basically. The other thing yeah. is the 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 outsole is very very stiff, which is again great for lifting, uh, but for running. And at that time, we were doing a lot of running. Uh, not the greatest. So not yeah not yeah. great. To run. I so don't look good to run in. I read that they do arrive very stiff, but yeah. after some time, they're meant to wear in and, they did and get break a bit in. more flexibility. Yeah, hundred percent. They yeah. did break in, but uh, I just never warmed to them. Like they didn't think they were anything. They're they're so simple, uh, and yeah, the, the material itself is like a, uh, a fabric with little dots, little plastic dots yeah. on them. So very bumpy, but very durable. Those dots eventually just all pop off over time, and just it's just the fabric underneath. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just, they're also not cheap for a new brand. Yeah, it's still one hundred and ninety bucks, uh, one hundred and ninety Australian. But by the way, most of these prices, or all the prices we refer to, are going to be Australian. And I, I can't it's imagine. Expensive. I don't I couldn't tell you off the top of my head the last time they actually changed anything about the design or no, the construction. It's been the same. Yeah. I think they've been out for. <laughs> Four years. Mm. Did a bit of research, I think, yeah. since 2016. No design changes. At all. Yeah. At all. Um, but I think one of the features with the Nobles is that they have a huge array of different colors yeah. that you can pick from. Yeah. So, so it's they kind make of simple it a design. Fun. Yeah, but they make it more fun through the through the colors. Mm. Um, so it looks like the design hasn't changed, but I'm curious if they've made actual different Quality changes, quality maybe. tweaks, or to the compound of the sole, or mm. or stuff like that. But they look the same. Yeah. They're the most simple looking shoe out of the bunch. Great durability. Like they they lasted after I started wearing them at work. They lasted yeah. ages. But yeah. I just yeah. didn't like training yeah. in them. And yeah. I mean, they they almost look like a casual shoe. You can mm. just wear on the weekends, mm. just yeah. with a pair of shorts or or jeans or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I think Kylie would train in them, hey, or she would coach yeah, in Kylie them. Had yeah. Kylie had a pair. Yeah. But yeah. I haven't few, seen many of them at the gym. Yeah, Linda had a pair, uh, and who else? Amy Miller. I mean, she, had, yep. she was like oh, the yeah. first. Yeah, she was wearing them a bunch, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've gone through Reebok, Nike, Noble. The next one on my list is Under Armour, which again is a new player in this space, but not a new brand at all. They've been around for quite a while, mm. of course, and they're on their second shoe. So they had the Tri Base Rain One, and I think it's called Tri Tri Base Rain Two, the yep. new one. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah. Retails at about 180 bucks. James Newbury is their flagship model in Australia. He trains with them a ton. I've seen a couple of people wear them at the gym, and they look like really good shoes as well, especially the second model, right? Yeah, I've got to say the Tri Base Rain first ones were the ugliest shoes I think I've ever <laughs> yeah. seen. I would never put those on my foot, but the the, the version two actually looked like a really cool shoe. Yeah. I like the design and, and it's something that, that I'd be happy to wear actually. Yeah, like the Metcons, the Metcon 5s, uh, the Tribase one that uh, outsole 
rapping up above was pretty polarizing. A lot of Oof. people that turned a lot of people off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but two, if you try those shoes on, uh, they're very, very, very thin around the heel. I, I tried them on and I the, the shoe felt good, <laughs> but the, just the it, it is like tissue paper thin. This is the ones around the heel, and I can't imagine that mm. foot wouldn't just pop out of them. Do you think you've got an issue with trying on shoes? I like no, <laughs> <laughs> just an educated consumer, <laughs> <laughs> just your pro educated consumer. Yeah. Just imagine the uh, the guys working in the shop. Oh, oh no, oh. here he comes again. <laughs> This will, be, never, this will be another 45 minutes. And he never buys anything. <laughs> well, it's good to go and try them. I, I, For sure. I have to admit, yeah. I have not tried on those ones, but the second ones look good. I just think, again, the price tag for a new brand like uh, or someone that's starting in that space, it's just so yeah. expensive, 180 yeah. bucks. Yeah. And you can't get them at Rebel, can you? Yeah. Oh, you can? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, that's where yeah. you try them. Yeah, okay. yeah. So they're available at Rebel as well. And you can get them on sale. That's the other thing. Yeah. I mean, to me, that would be an on-sale shoe. Yeah, who, same. Who wears them? I haven't seen anyone uh, wear them. Johnny has the, yeah, the uh, yeah, he has yeah. the ones black and. Uh, <laughs> He's got the ugly ones. <laughs> yeah, sorry, well, they're Johnny. Not, they're not that bad in in black. He's got yeah. a yeah, pretty much an all black color. So I know Royce. There. Royce wears them, or sometimes I see him on Instagram with them on. Yeah. I don't like again between him and James. I don't know any other. Yeah. Athletes wearing them. And no female athletes, hey. I haven't right. seen them sponsor any female athletes. Mm. Um, what is Under Armour famous for? Like, what sports do they NFL typically... in America. Yeah. NFL. And okay. basketball. The, yeah, but you have The Rock, all his training shoes, yeah. all his training apparel is yeah. big, big, yeah. big, big. The, the Hova, H-O-V-A shoes are like their big training shoe, but they don't. They look like a... They don't look... They look like oh, a I massive think, bat, like I a think that's basketball good. <laughs> yeah. shoe. Like yeah. if you're like some huge jack dude in like Gold's gym yeah. working out, yeah, sure, I get it. <laughs> Not <laughs> CrossFit gym. And actually Under Armour were the sponsors of the CrossFit Games in 2010. Oh, wow. But you didn't get any shoes. I don't even know if you got any apparel. Mm. No one really wore it. Mm. There were some banners around in the stadium. Yeah. But they were, uh, they were the first, first big brand that came on board there. Uh, next one, OG brand, um, OG company, Innovate. They have the F Flight G and the F Flight Two Hundred and Sixty. Insanely expensive shoes, Ooh. coming in at two hundred and eighty bucks for yep. either of those models. <laughs> but those shoes are all my experiences with Innovate are amazing. Same. Great shoes. Yeah. In the beginning, the first models I had models uh, that I was wearing. They were too narrow through the toe base. Mm. And I actually would split them on the side. Like my pinky toe would almost come out of the shoe. Yeah, yeah. But they fixed that with these models. Yeah. Well, they changed. Innovate, they, they used to have, at least in their uh, trail running shoes, just different lasts, which is how the <clears throat> profile of the foot shape looks. Mm. So you can get a competition shoe, which is would be a lot narrower, which you could strap. And back then, they didn't really have the variation. Mm. And then they've got a wide. So you can pick the different models if you want to go more performance strapped in tight or you want to have something a little bit more free but now everyone's kind of gone the wide toe box it's more yeah. standard yeah and they they talk about that on their website it is a big question i mean they're more expensive and for a bit of context they run at 280 mm. so versus your Metcon or nano yeah. 190 so it's another hundred dollars more so how do you justify spending that much more that, on a shoe? That, or how do they actually justify it to well, that F like G the would user? Be the first one that was kind of drawing me back to maybe giving Innovate a try after all these years. Mm. Would Just, you pay two hundred and eighty dollars for that's, a pair of training shoes? No. That's and the, also availability. Yeah. They're not easy to just go in a shop and purchase. Yeah. And when I looked last night, the distributors that sold Innovate back when I wore them, they've seemed to all either gone out of business or they're not featuring Innovate anymore or they're selling out all the stock. Mm. Uh, but you mentioned a website that's probably a good tip yeah. to try and buy shoes. Uh, wildfiresports.com. .com. Wildfire Sports. It's yeah. a shop in Brisbane, right? In Brisbane, <clears throat> yeah. And go. again, <clears throat> I just felt that they just would sell Innovates for when I was buying them for trail running, hiking and stuff. So yeah. then mm. they carry all. I had a pair of Innovate weightlifting shoes 
but I can't remember if I bought from them or not mm. back in the okay. day. Yeah. So they look they look cool. I think yeah. the earlier innovates for me yeah. didn't really like the design. Yeah, uh, that was daggy. more of a trailer shoe. Yeah, a bit yeah. daggy, but I feel like the the latest ones have actually picked up the design game. So Scott Panchek is wearing those F Light G's right now at the uh, Mayhem Classic. That is uh, <laughs> that is some good info right there. He's uh, I'm pretty sure Scott. Pan- yeah, I'm pretty sure yeah. he's doing it. He's on Rich's team. No, no. Teams. Oh, they're doing individual for this one, yeah. but he's doing Rich's team for the season. Yes. Really. Yeah. Well, it's so, okay. So innovate. Uh, Awesome shoes, great quality, high price tag, difficult to try on, mm. and also maybe a little bit cumbersome to try and order and get hold, get your hands on them. Really, two hundred and eighty bucks and expensive. That's yeah, just too much. Expensive. Yeah. Okay, next brand, new brand for me, Nick. You uh, run with this one. Yeah, uh, Ultra the Hit XT Two. Now, the only reason I know about these is again because I wear. I've got some Ultra Trail running shoes. Uh, How do you spell Ultra? Uh, A L T R A, uh, and they are hugely, hugely, hugely popular shoe in ultra di- like ultra marathons, long distance trail running. What's, uh, what's the origin of that brand? Running a color, I think they're Colorado based uh, as American. an al- alternative to uh, like the Nikes and the ASIC running shoes. Okay, uh, but they're very very specific uh, last shape is they look like clown shoes. They are not for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I, well, so I looked at the XT once and 1.5s yeah. and they look not good at all, but yeah. the twos in some of the colorways actually look all right. Yeah. The, the foot profile, it does take some getting used to. They are very wide mm. in the forefoot, like very wide, yeah. which is great. Uh, which is great for when your foot swells and you're, say, doing an ultra marathon. Uh, mm. But for me, I would I haven't tried this particular pair, but I would think that they would be almost too clunky and cumbersome for a training <laughs> shoe. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious about these. I would love to try them because they're they... also on the barefoot bandwagon. Yeah, right? like... so they're zero drop. Uh, mm. Again, uh, a lot of ultra long distance hikers just swear by them. And I, I find them okay, but I've I've gone back to Innovates just because I like them in that arena. <laughs> Are they readily available in Australia? No, same Wildfire would be the only one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. So Wildfire is a pretty is a good niche good website for yeah. niche shoes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another one which uh, would be Wiggle was another big supplier back in the day. Is that the UK website? The UK one, but they have an Australian distributor, and they used to have all the off brands that you oh. couldn't get. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I still, ordered from Wiggle. Yeah. I ordered a pair of Innovates from Wiggle, yeah, and they uh, got here really quick. Yeah, that's where I used to buy them maybe six, seven years ago. That's where mm. I buy all my shoes from. Just with the exchange rate, the shipping, everything was great. Yeah, I forgot mm. about that. Yeah. Okay, next one is maybe going to be my uh, – what's the award I want to give this shoe? Like <laughs> best underdog. Mm. Underdog. Yeah, New Balance Minimus Prevail. They're 180 bucks, in my opinion, and extremely good quality shoe, durable, good sole. You feel really grounded and well, kind of connected with the lifts and stuff when you do lifting in these. Mm. Uh, I can, I when I had them, I could easily run in them. Um, I say, good looking shoe as well. Like I think it, it looks yeah. like a good shoe. Yeah, um, wearable. Yeah, wearable. not sure where. Uh, it's the best place to get them now, though, these days. I haven't looked at those for a while, but they, in my opinion, a great shoe. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think New Balance has like a really good heritage in terms of, you know, being a good running shoe and, mm. and high quality. So, well, I think if you're pretty safe to stick with Reebok, Nike, New Balance, at least you know that the construction and quality, you can, it's not going to just fall apart on you. Mm. Okay. Next. A uh, brand is the one that I'm currently wearing, and I've been through four pairs of these. So, I've, so number one, they're not not durable at all, which is the biggest con, but also I'd say the only con. They're the Strike Chill Pill or the Strike um, Movement Shoe. It's a Canadian brand, or is yeah, it American? I think it's Canadian. I think it's Canadian yeah. too, and it's a really minimal shoe, so really low profile shoe with a thin flexible sole 
So not for everyone, especially in the beginning, if you're not used to kind of walking around barefoot or if you haven't really trained up your feet to get a little bit stronger, I'd say in the beginning, maybe buy them to just for walking and cruising around. They're mm. super comfortable, uh, mm. really lightweight. But uh, training in them can take a little bit of getting used to. But right now, that's pretty much the only shoe that I wear, um, yeah, day in and day out at don't, the gym. Don't they make more durable models? Though? I'm not 100% familiar with their the model lineup, but I, I know that the as many reviews as possible guy loves them too. Yeah. Mm. But there is different models that they solve the, your... Yeah. yeah, they've got the chill pill in different uppers, and yeah. I've had the two different ones, and they both of them are not durable. Mm. They have other models of shoes as well that didn't fit my feet as well. Mm. Um, but I haven't trained in those because of that reason. So they've mm. been very durable, but they haven't really been tested. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I love them. I think it's only me and Tash that are wearing them at the gym. Um, yeah, I, I really could not recommend these shoes uh, anymore from my end. They're the ones that I'm sticking with right now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think also, again... A really good looking shoe, so you can yeah. wear those out yeah, thank on you. the weekend. And yeah, nice, <laughs> nice design. Yeah, yeah, not available, readily available in Australia. They no. had an Australian distributor, but they're out of, they're done basically. They're, they stopped doing that because they're sending it directly from the states now. And uh, yeah, you, you'd have to order from the Strike website. They do have good sales on every now and then. I think last time I bought two pairs for about a hundred bucks each. Um, I think yeah. the end of the year sale, they just had yeah. one. Boxing day sale and stuff like that. It's always pretty good. All right. And then the last one on the list is uh, my maybe next pair of shoes. It's <laughs> a big wild card, I would say. Yeah, it's yeah. a very big wild card. So mm. no surprise, the last two brands we're going through are the ones that I added onto the list. <laughs> this one is the Vivo Primus Light. Uh, Vivo spells V-I-V-O, and they're massive barefoot proponents. Actually, a great brand to follow on Instagram because um, they talk about the benefits of walking around barefoot, uh, getting stronger feet, having the right alignments through your toes, mm. uh, which can cause, if you don't have it, which I'd say most of us don't have the correct alignment, can cause all sorts of issues upstream through your body, through your hips and back, etc. Um, they're very, very educational on Instagram. Uh, their shoes are... Polarizing to say the least with the design. I think that's why we're getting mm. some. Uh, I can never wear <laughs> some uh, <laughs> some comments from the sideline here. Uh, what do you think about yeah, the design? You'd need to own it. That's something that <laughs> yeah. you'd just you'd, <laughs> you'd need to own that shoe <laughs> if you if you walked into the gym with them. Yeah, yeah. 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 Also, um, one of the downsides is that they're quite expensive shoes and almost never on sale. Yeah. One of the main reasons is because uh, they don't sell nowhere near the volume that all these other brands are selling uh but if you go to a lot of the health spaces like and talk to physiotherapists or caros and stuff like that you'll actually see a lot of vivo yeah yep. that's generally what um they will recommend <clears throat> they're more they have a lifestyle brand too because they definitely have like leather uppers or shoes that to wear more yeah based on the, the wide toe box zero drop they're actually quite cool yeah. Like some of those those shoes, they more the lifestyle shoes. They look really good. Yeah. Are these are the Primus Light? Are they a training shoe? Yes. Yep. They are. Uh, yeah. So they're designed for functional fitness and the type of stuff we're doing here. Yes, hundred okay. percent. Yep. And you can actually see a lot of um, uh, what would I call them like Instagram powerlifters. Yep. And quite often those people try actually end up training in a CrossFit gym, and a lot of them wear them. Yep. Uh, that was one of the first places that I uh, discovered them. They And they look better than what – I, I just, my, it's hard to judge by Instagram, right? But they actually look better than what yeah. they look like on yeah. the website. The black <laughs> ones actually look all right. Mm. Yeah. They look like a relatively normal sneaker, I would yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So I might try that if I get someone <laughs> at a decent price. <laughs> I think, what did we say? 190 bucks for the Primus Light? I actually think that's a bit low. I think they might have been even more expensive. So I've seen some of their shoes is like well over $200. Yeah. And again, I yeah. think the only place I've ever seen them is at Wildfire that they've got them off. Yeah. You you can actually buy them at some physiotherapist places and stuff oh, like really? that. Yeah. They, <clears throat> they will sell them there. Are we sponsored by Wildfire? <laughs> no, I just for all these off offshoot brands, it yeah. seemed to be the only one that brings them into Australia. Yeah. You were the first person that person that told me about that website, and I had a look at them. It's a good website. They have a lot of cool brands there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a little browse around, and yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, a good selection. Mm. Shout out to Wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so through that list, there's uh, a couple of brands there, and I already answered it, what I think my next pair of shoes are going to be. How about you boys? What are you looking at next? Cal, first. For me, I would like to get a pair of the Nano 9s. The problem is the color that I want, you can't get it here in Australia. So there is a black and gold variation, which I just love the look of, but I would have to get them in from the US and it's going to cost a little bit more. Uh, come on. So, he, and, uh, so you're tipping at that 200 bucks uh, scale again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To get the right um, color. And I probably would, but I dare say Camilla wouldn't be so happy with that. So, yeah. Nick, what about you? Uh, I don't know. I'm be on the fence because I like to have the new Shoes all the time, <laughs> but the the na- the nines are so good. They'd be uh, could possibly pull me back for another pair just Whoa. because to hang on. Yeah. Okay, Ooh. two two big votes there for yeah. the nano nines. There you go. When are the nano tens coming out? Don't know. Wow, you can have Find a good it. guess, Nick. I'm yeah, sure. they're coming. I I can't remember the release. It's a month date before this the games or. Got to be. Yeah, usually. Yeah, and the games like, are in August. Yeah, same. So everyone now, I would say, would be on the release before the games. At least Nike and Mac- and Nike and Reebok, just to have the new models, the flagship models out. So, so the Metcon Six should be coming out as well, and I assume Nike will release maybe they they might ditch a, a model or release a Flyknit Four. Yeah, so the free X3. I'm gonna say, in, and so what I've learned is that uh, shoes go on a two year cycle with the, the outsole. Mm. So, with the Reebok and Nike, they will keep for at least two years the same outsole. So, I would mm. say the 10 will have look very similar to the nine for the Reebok, and then mm. this is a new outsole for the five. So, the six will be very similar. So, yeah. you're gonna get well, you get two years out of those before they go and start redesigning and the production all happens. So it's a safe bet that both shoes will be fairly similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Prediction. Very good. Mm. So I think we covered that quite well. Make sure that you looking for new shoes. It's definitely worthwhile to spend a little bit of money to get a proper shoe in the gym for several reasons. One of the main ones I like to say is to get rid of your lifters. You're going to be more grounded, solid on the floor when you do any barbell or dumbbell work because mm. you're more stable. Uh, but keep your runners for some of the running workouts. Yeah, oh, but, for sure. But I would yeah. even say stuff, more kettlebell swings, mm. uh, plyometric stuff where you're doing box jumps. Yep. I just think having a high heel stack running shoe is not ideal. Mm. And if you can afford it to get a more training specific shoe, I think mm. you'll be doing <clears> yourself <throat> a bit of a service to be a you may let start doing a bit more because you feel more comfortable mm. in wearing a shoe made for the activity that you're doing. Yeah. Mm. So controversial question here to wrap up the the normal shoes. Oh. Double unders. Mm. Mm. What's the best shoes for skipping rope? For me, I do prefer a shoe with more cushioning. So just for so my you like the runners knees yeah. and calves so i do like more cushioning and that's why i I'd move to the mecon free x because they are more cushioning because i had a calf blowout um a couple of years ago oh, and right. i do think it might have been from just too much running on kind of nanos and, and mecons nick how about you Double same runners. i like the free mecons just mm. because they're a little bit more spongy a little bit more bounce back yeah i mm. like a uh, the strikes for me has been the best shoes to do double unders in light, thin sole. Just I just try not to do any crazy volume. If I hit more than three, four hundred double unders in a workout, yeah. I pull up with a bit sore calves. But I think having built more and more of that strength through my feet mm. it actually allows me to wear those shoes better, and it's it feels a lot nicer when I do them. Mm. Yeah, um, I think the flooring in here is slightly more cushioning as well yeah. compared to our previous location. Yeah, I think it's thinner but softer. Yeah. yeah. So I might be. No, I'm pretty sure yeah. it's a thinner, so. thinner mat, but slightly yeah. softer than the than the yeah. muscle driver. Which just means maybe you don't need as kind of softer cushioning shoe mm. with this flooring. Okay, workouts with double unders, running, and a barbell 
squatting movement. What shoe are we picking here? For me, I'd definitely be the nines. Yeah. Reebok nines. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Cal? Yeah, my go-to, Macron Free X, which they're actually great for everything except for rope climbs. They are the worst shoe for rope climbs. Yeah. yeah. Same with the strikes, really. That's the only downside. Uh, the shoes that I wear now. Rope climbs is not great, but hey, we don't rope climb that much, so not a big issue. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's. Uh, we still have some time here. Let's attack another topic. Ooh. <laughs> Lifting shoes, do I need them? Uh, I say yes, definitely. And I think you benefit more from them in the beginning when you start CrossFit than when you do after you've been doing it for a long time. Ooh, Ooh do you mean that you'd be better off buying lifting shoes than your first kind of CrossFit shoes? No, I shoe? mean you do yourself a favor by having a lifting-specific shoe, like a weightlifting shoe for – doing your strength, say back squats, squatting, mm -hmm. helps you put you in a bit better body position before as you're developing. At least that's what I found. I had such terrible mm. mobility. <laughs> <laughs> well, you actually are kind of spot on there. Yeah. An Olympic, Olympic lifting shoe is helping you align the weight correctly in a squat or a snatch or anything like that. So if mm. you have mobility issues, it's going to help you a little bit. But so what the Olympic lifting shoe does, it has a solid heavy flat sole at the bottom yeah. but it's got a heel raise so it allows you to come up um, higher through the back of your heel and straighten your torso in the lift to a certain degree yeah. it's not magic it's not gonna you know give you a hundred percent better squat or whatever but no. it does help you a little bit right yeah. i think with lifting shoes um they're typically more expensive yes so i think it's downside. hard to get a lifting shoe below two hundred dollars um, so I would say for someone who's starting out, I personally don't think it's necessary initially. Mm. Um, if you're starting out, you're typically doing lighter weights anyway. And to lift your heels up, you can always just put a couple of uh, plates. change plates under mm. the shoes as well. Um, when, did you, when did you buy your first pair of like, dedicated lifting shoes? Within six months. Within Got six started. months. Yeah. I yeah. remember because I shot my mobility, <laughs> Sean's like, make sure just buy some weightlifting shoes. Yeah. And then just, and really, I mean, for like more dynamic Ollie lifting, I don't think it made any difference, but yep. just fundamentally doing back squats out of the rack, it helped for sure. For sure. Yeah. I would yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. I think you can definitely hit bigger numbers wearing lifting shoes for yeah. kind of front squat and back squat. A yeah. couple of tips that I have if you're considering buying lifting shoes is number one, what program are you doing at the gym? If you're doing FSC, I think the need for lifters is not as high no. much of it because you don't really do much no. barbell work at all. I would say almost zero, right, yes. for FSC? Yeah. yeah. So if you do FSC day in, day out, let's not worry about lifting shoes quite yet. Yeah. If you're starting out with CrossFit, that's when it's becoming a bit more um, valuable or relative to what you're doing. And I would recommend to... Ask just someone that has, you know, that you know quite well at the gym that has similar size feet to you, just try on yeah. a pair of lifters before you buy them. Because as Cal said, lifters generally can be quite expensive unless you buy them on sale. Mm. And when you commit to buying one, the upside is that you have those lifters for years. Yeah. I think I've had mine for 10 years. Yeah. So, because they don't, they don't, well, one, they are durable, but also they don't really get the wear and tear with the way you use them. You don't no. run with them outside. You, yeah. Or, you should not be running with them outside. Yeah. Um, so they'll last you forever, really. Yeah. yeah. What lifters are there to consider if you are buying <clears throat> your first pair? Nike Romaleo? Romaleo? Romaleos. Romaleo, yeah. which uh, are the ones I have. Yeah. yeah. Shit, I haven't um, seen you wearing them for ages. No, well, I haven't been doing much squatting or yeah. lifting for a while, so… Yeah, and they are they camouflage in color, so even when I wear them, <laughs> <laughs> they kind of blend in. That's why I never see them. Yeah. Uh, the Nikes are great. They probably have the highest heel race out of most of the lifters. Yeah, there's an Adidas Leet Sung, which is higher. Yeah, which is a little bit higher. But yeah, they're all. I think there's a there's like a, a standard. It can only be so high for competition, and they all max out at that like twenty millimeters. <laughs> Is it 20 mil? That's oh, yeah. high. Mm. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm sure someone will correct me if that's wrong. But for competition, they have to be. They can't be above that. A certain limit. Yeah. Them, yeah. And the Nikes are quite having clunky, or not to a degree. So they're not great to do box jumps or double unders and oh, stuff for that. No way. way. I would not no recommend way. that. No. So no. if you are buying those <laughs> shoes specifically for lifting, great. But wear them for lifting and squatting out of the rack, etc. But when it comes to a workout, really don't wear them for anything where you're going to move around a lot, nope. bouncing or anything like that. Yeah. To explain what really happens there is you, you're doing your Achilles and your calf muscles a big disservice. You're going to shorten your calf muscles and set yourself up for heaps of issues through the Achilles tendon and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, other brands? Uh, the Legacy, the Reebok Legacy. Lifters. Yes. They would probably be the biggest. Biggest seller in CrossFit yeah. gyms now, yeah. yeah. They're, uh, and they're just coming out with a new model. So they've just come out now with the first versions of the that lifter with the flex weave upper. Oh wow, a lifter yeah. with a flex weave upper. Yeah. I did not know that. But I've got that. I've got a special edition <laughs> <laughs> legacy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, from uh, Wit in the UK that has that was must be the the first version before they started selling them. So it has a flex weave upper. Okay. On it. And roughly, what's the price on either of those shoes, Cal? What, what are the Nikes? Two eighty for the Nikes. Two hundred eighty bucks for the Nikes. Yeah, yeah. And they're almost okay. never on sale. Yep. They they do. So it's like okay, probably once or twice a year. Yeah. Oh, so it could be like a Black Friday it. sale or something like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I think it's like two ninety, two eighty for the Reebok legacies, and then the Adidas, uh, the Adi Powers. Are, the same yeah they're the ones would actually I probably be the could be even more expensive <laughs> it's all about the high two two hundreds it's so long since i bought my adi powers yeah, and I, I ordered them from the u.s I they just really came out remember. with new models the adidas just came out this year with or end of 2019 with the whole new model range so the power lifts the adi power something else another mm. like really base model one. yep yeah so, and then innovate has some too that you can get yeah, so. they actually might be on sale more often. The Innovate lifters, I don't yeah. see them. Noble do lifters as well. Yeah. Oh, but they I haven't seen those. I haven't seen them. Yeah, they look nice. Yeah, yeah. I think they've actually got. A they wood, actually look quite wood. old school. They got a wood heel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then I think Reebok also do like a hybrid sort of shoe, which is a little bit softer with a higher heel. Oh, um, I, so I know you which can one you mean. Kind of use it for yeah. some gymnastics and yeah, and it's got a and, flexible toe. Yeah, yeah, front. exactly, yeah. exactly. But the heel's not as high, mm. um, no which could be a good option. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a few options there, uh, and you can get the. I know the Reebok, Reebok Legacy lifters. You can order from the Wildlife and from the Reebok website. Yeah. Do they have you ever seen them at Rebel Sport? The lifters. Oh. No, no. So they're so. hard to try yeah. on. Hey, so yeah. the advice there is again, just try with some mates at the gym that has yeah. a similar size. Because lifters, you want them to be tight, tight-ish. Yeah, you don't want your any movement in the foot at all. Yeah, they can be way tighter. Yep, my shoes are really tight. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my toe is coming out of one in one of them. Um, I didn't know they made weightlifting shoes for children yeah i know <laughs> hey it's a it's a you know the asians are pretty good at that sport so they do yeah, oh, there you they go. do make it for for asian kids chinese uh five-year-olds that's when they start yeah, yeah. i actually wonder if they put lifters on those kids when they start you know, start uh, olympic weightlifting i'm sure i'm sure of it <laughs> yeah all right awesome i think we covered most bases you guys have anything you want to add on there um, not for me. I think just think if you are interested in, in shoes, just talk to people in the gym. So if you see someone wearing the shoes that you're interested in, just go ask them what they like about them, how they feel, yeah. all of those types of things. Um, I've got to say, I think when it comes to CrossFit equipment, that's definitely the number one topic of conversation yeah. in the gym. It has to be. People love to talk about shoes. Yeah, how much time do you spend online watching reviews, Nick? It's just it's Instagram. It's Instagram's filled with shoes. Come on, be honest. Oh, yeah. I, I feel we should give a shout out to uh, two of the accounts on Instagram. Yeah. You probably browse a lot. What are they? Uh, as many reviews as possible. Oh, um, I meant the uh, shoe ones. Isn't oh, the there sh- like uh, one for Reebok and one for Nike? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's Nike. Like, yeah, there's Nike Metcon Club or something. Yeah, Metcon Club, like Metcon Re- Tribe, yeah. Reebok, Reebok, Reebok Nano, Nano, Nano Club. Yep. You can. <laughs> See all the new models on all the leaks, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, they all um, they that's the first where you find everything out. Yeah. So mm. actually another good website to look at shoes 
and you can order them from there as well, is the Rogue US site. Mm. They have a good selection of the main brands. By far the best. I think the widest selection. Rogue has? All, yeah, yeah, 100% in okay. one spot. Yeah. <clears throat> I have the black and gold nanos that I want. <laughs> <laughs> When's your birthday? December. Yeah. So uh, uh, twelve yeah. months away. So just twelve months. They'll be new. They'll be Reebok nano ten by that point. Yeah. All right. Awesome guys. That was really fun. Let's wrap it up there with a last note on the upcoming fundraiser oh, yeah. for the bushfires. February eighth. Yep. Yep. Saturday morning. Yep. At the gym. <clears throat> I don't think there's a she, Tash hasn't put a time down yet when it's all. No, it'll be TBA. in the morning for a yeah. few hours for sure. Yep. Yep. Cal, you got a teammate? I do. <laughs> so I'm partnering up with uh, the big dog, Buster Brooks. Buster, yep. And we are Team Thunder Bro. So <laughs> we are coming God. in. We're coming in huge. So look out. <laughs> what shoes does Buster wear? God, it's interesting. He actually has quite a selection he's a, of He's uh, a bit of a low-key shoe hoarder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he, 100%. Every time he trains, I swear to God, he's wearing like a different type of shoe. Yeah. Um, I couldn't agree more. He always has the latest and greatest. Yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't yeah. talk about shoes too much. Yeah. No. I've That's seen him in bus. Innovates. I've seen him in Reebok, Nanos. I've seen yeah. uh, what lifters yeah. he's got. I think he's got the remember. nines, doesn't he? Reebok yeah. Nano nines? Yeah. Yeah, but he's yeah. Got, yeah. He bought the. He even bought the fours when they were re-released. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yeah. He bought those when we went to the CrossFit Games in 2018. Yeah. They had the re-release of the Nano Fours with the yeah. gum sole. They look actually awesome. Yeah. Yeah. If you see him wearing them, go and have a look. Yeah. Mm. He is a bit of a yeah. He he lies low with the shoes, but he updates quite regularly. And I would also say, Larry mm -hmm. Zanek. Emanuela, they're yep. on their shoes as well. Oh, 100%. Quite often. Yeah. yeah. I see them in, in new, nice training mm. shoes. Uh, Nick, who's your partner? Uh, Ryan Clifton. Oh. Yeah. Team name? Yeah, it's uh, something like, uh, something, oh my God. I can't remember you are now. The, you are the keyboard warrior. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So, uh, yeah, just looking to have a bit of fun, you know? What shoes are, is he wearing? He's still on the Metcon yeah, fours. Yeah, he got custom shoes. Yeah. I think it was it in the Rabbitohs yeah. colors. Yeah, yeah. I, but he's black looking, and red. Yeah. Is it black and red? Black yeah. and red. And he's yeah. looking to upgrade. Yeah, yeah, Cliffy. He, it sounds like Nick, Nick wants you to buy some new shoes before you come <laughs> <laughs> or come training. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. If you haven't signed up yet, or if you're looking for a partner, or even if you just want to get involved, uh, definitely uh, just let. Tash uh, and or Sean no. Um, I'm not going to compete because I've got training on later in the day, probably part of the morning, but I'll be volunteering, helping out, shooting, judging, doing all the other stuff that's required. There's a bunch of small little jobs always on those days. So, yeah. yeah, I would say too, there's a lot of new faces, a lot of new members at the gym. Yeah. I would say it's a very good opportunity to come <laughs> out and meet people uh, and to just get involved i remember busters when he first started his first comp was with me oh there you go oh, really? yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. he gets he'd around doesn't he? like three he'd been training only a few months and then look at him go get straight into yeah. it and I, th I think it's worth calling out that this is not a serious competition no no like people are just here to have fun and and just kind of really get a workout in yeah. at the end of the day and, and and raise some money so if you're kind of feeling nervous about doing your first comp like just jump in I yeah. guarantee you'll enjoy it. Extra points if you're a member that's been there for a while and you recruit one of the new newbies. Ooh, yeah. I think there that'd be awesome to see. Yeah. All right, guys, let's wrap it up. Very geeky topic. I'm <laughs> sure we'll find something uh, that's even more nerdy, but yeah. that was fun. Cool. First Thank podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys.